What's up guys? So on October 18th, we got to see Gennady Golovkin destroy Marco Antonio Rubio. But the show that really stole the night was the co-main event, which was Nemesis Lanier versus Nicholas Walters. In what turned out to be Walters' biggest win of his career in the destruction of Nonito Donaire. Now, I'm going to do a quick review of basically the fight. In the fight, right from the beginning, Walters looked to put on heavy pressure and be on top of Nonito Donaire. The fight was, at first, I don't want to say a stalemate, but it was like kind of even, like 10 twice. And then towards the second round, Nonito Donaire picked it up and so did Walters, and they both come out strong. And towards the end of the second round, I believe, yeah, it was, Nonito Donaire hurt Walters, and maybe, maybe, if there was more time, he could have maybe dropped them. It, it depends, but he didn't. But he did hurt him, it was noticeable. And then following in round three, I believe, Walters knocked him down with a perfectly placed uppercut, which immediately dropped Nonito Donaire's guard and put him down, touched the canvas, and he got up. He recovered pretty quick. And then Walters went on to put relentless strategic pressure on Donaire and hurt him. I mean, this guy was throwing power shots. And by the end of the match, he saw the results on his face. I mean, he was beat up bad. I mean, he was beat worse than when he faced Regendorf, in my opinion. And the fight ended in the sixth round, tech by knockout, in like at the very last seconds. And Nonito Donaire was knocked down face first with a over the hand, I believe, right right like an overhook that hit him on top of the head by Walters. This was an amazing performance. I think this displayed Walters ability to become a big fighter. Like this is this is what exactly what he needed. This was basically the being born into a star. Like he needed a big name like this in order to cement himself into basically the top the top names of his division and i think he he took advantage of the situation and did it perfectly i mean this defeat this defeat for Donaire couldn't have gotten any better for walters now as for Donaire, i i picked walters to win the fight following only because i wasn't sure where nonito Donaire was mentally in the game Following his defeat from Rigendolf, he hasn't been the same as far as my concerns go. He seems different. He seems more like like he's not there anymore, n not fully. But he went on to say that he trained really hard for this fight. He knew what he was up against and that he just got beat by the better man. And that's basically what essentially did happen that night. He did get beat by a better man, which was Nicholas Walters. He put on a tremendous show. He showed speed, power, good combinations. He basically, in a way, was countering Donaire. Like, with everything he had, Donaire would come in, and then he would answer back with hard punches. And at times, he was displaying a really good jab. Now, as following his victory, what's next for Walters? Well, they immediately said that a fight between him and the WBO champion at the featherweight division Lomachenko could be a possibility, but Walters is leaning and wants more of Gonzalez, who has the WBC belt. He wants a unification belt next. He says he wants big names. If it was up to him, he'll fight Gonzalez. Now, with his win over Donaire, he gained the Super WBA featherweight title. And another possibility could be a fight between Russia's... His name is kind of hard to pronounce Evgeny Ebing, Grobinich, I don't know how to say it, my bad, but he's the IBF featherweight champion. So, with being the big four titles, the WBA, which Walters just acquired following his his defeat, his um knockout victory over Donaire, he has two big possible fights. I don't think he should fight Lomachenko, because I don't think Lomachenko has built up some, enough star power over the over, Although he is very big and he was very big in the amateurs, but 
he doesn't necessarily want Lomachenko, he said, because he doesn't have enough star power, like like I believe also. So he wants to face a bigger name, such as Gonzalez, and that's who he's aiming for next. And Gonzalez says, I think, I think he said that he was up for it. So what looks to be next is a unification bout, which I think is going to be, for him, the WBC. So it's gonna, I think it will be Gonzalez versus Walters. But he could also face um, the IBF champion, the the Mexican Russian guy, who's also very good. These are very good potential matches. And as for what's next for the other champions, well, unless they fight each other, I only want to see them face top competition. Like I think unification bouts should be taking place right now. We've seen all of them to prove who's the best. They're all very skillful wise, and it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting following the year. I think within the next year, 2015, all three belts should be should be in one hand by the end of the year, if not all of them. It depends on, on if they fight each other. If two champions face each other, that will be two unification bouts, and then you need just one more in order for someone to have all of them. So, with this victory, Walters improves his record to 25 wins with 21 KOs, and he remains undefeated in the featherweight division, and is the new WBA champion. Congratulations to him. I'm, I'm, I can't wait to see more of him. He's going to be very good and he's going to be possibly going to be facing a lot of other big names depending on who goes up in a way or who comes down. You never know. So until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.